A source tells CNN's Jamie Gangel that 10 documents with classification markings were found in November, less than a week before the midterm elections. The papers were dated from 2013 to 2016 when Biden was vice president. Now, the source also says that among the classified materials were U.S. intelligence memos and briefing materials related to Ukraine, Iran, and the United Kingdom. CNN special correspondent Jamie Gangel is here. Jamie, you've gotten great reporting. You've also learned you. how these documents were discovered. So just walk us through that. So just big picture for context, I, I think it's important to state that almost all the papers in the office were personal. Uh, they included materials about Bo Biden's funeral arrangements, condolence letters, uh, reference material. Uh, uh, in fact, that's why a personal lawyer to Biden was going through the material and cleaning it out so that it would remain confidential. My understanding is the lawyer is going through the boxes. He sees a manila envelope mark stamped on the front VP personal, which may explain how it, how it got packed up. He opens it up. He sees classified, immediately closes uh, the folder again and calls for help. The archives uh, are informed that day immediately. They come the next day to pick up the three or four boxes. And in those boxes, uh, my understanding is when the archives come to the office, they sort of look around, do a, do a cursory check. They identify three or four boxes that contain these 10 classified documents, as well as some unclassified documents that fall under the Presidential Records Act. Jamie, any indication uh, about how these documents got mm -hmm. into this, this office? No, not, not that we know yet. But, you know, maybe the marking on that folder, uh, maybe it was an honest mistake because it was uh, marked VP personal. Just for context, I've spoken to sources familiar with the National Archives. It's important to know this has happened in the past. Former presidents, former vice presidents, former high-level officials accidentally take something. Uh, it's an honest mistake. They also point to, I spoke to one source who, for the record, is a lifelong registered Republican. And that source said to me that this looks like an, an honest mistake and pointed to the fact that the Biden folks immediately cooperated and returned it. Jamie Gangel with the reporting. Thank you very much. Let's turn now to CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig. All right, so let's start with breaking down what we know about these documents so far. And of course, we've just been through this with former President Trump, how they compare to the documents found at Mar-a-Lago. Sure, Victor. So let's understand, first of all, how did we get here? Now, Joe Biden, of course, left office as vice president back in January of 2017. After that, he took a position with something called the Biden Center at the University of Pennsylvania. It was mostly an honorary academic type of title. Now, he had an office in Washington, D.C., which he left in 2019. Joe Biden left, but his stuff stayed behind. And now, just two months ago, in November of this year, Joe Biden's attorneys were going through those documents and they found some of these classified documents. Now, there are some vital differences between the Biden documents and Donald Trump's documents, starting with the sheer number of documents. As Jamie just reported, 10 documents found in Biden's office, over 200 classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. Also, the classification level. Now, this is actually the same. Both Joe Biden and Donald Trump's documents included documents at the highest level of classification, what we call SCI, sensitive compartmented information. Now, this is what, in a prosecutor's view, is the single most important differentiator, knowledge and intent. Now, thus far, Joe Biden's people have denied that he knew anything about this. DOJ surely is going to investigate that. There's nothing to indicate to the contrary. Donald Trump has openly admitted that he knew he had these documents at Mar-a-Lago. He's offered up various other defenses. So he clearly knew there's still a question about whether he had criminal intent. That's gonna be crucial for prosecutors. And then finally, there's compliance. As Jamie just said, as soon as Joe Biden's lawyers found this, they notified the archives and turned over the classified documents. Of course, Donald Trump's team was much more resistant and, put, and is now being investigated for potential obstruction of justice. Well, speaking of that investigation of the DOJ, Ellie, how big of a problem will this be for Attorney General Merrick Garland now? He's got problems. This is going to be complicated now. 
Importantly, Merrick Garland has appointed a U.S. attorney named John Loesch, who's the U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Illinois, the Chicago area. He is actually a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney to investigate the Biden documents, and we just reported earlier today that Loesch has already given his preliminary report to Merrick Garland, the attorney general. Now, Garland really has two choices. He can say, I see nothing here, we're closing it down, or he can say, there may be something here, let's launch a full-scale investigation. Of course, with respect to Trump's documents at Mar-a-Lago, Merrick Garland has appointed a special counsel, Jack Smith, who is investigating both the Mar-a-Lago documents and Donald Trump's involvement in January 6th. Jack Smith is gonna make the initial recommendation about whether to indict or not, but again, ultimately, the buck stops with Merrick Garland. He will have the final say on both of these. So that's the legal investigation. How about Congress? What can we see out of Congress? It is a different world on Capitol Hill. The world we've gotten used to with Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff running some of the key investigations. That is not the world anymore. As of last week, we now have Speaker McCarthy. Jim Jordan will be running some of the key investigations. You know they will dig in on this. We had Republican members of Congress last night on our air talking about how eager they were to dig into this. We have a quote here from Representative James Comer from the Oversight Committee who said, quote, is the White House going to be raided tonight? Are they going to raid the Biden Center? This is further concern that there is a two-tier justice system. There's some hyperbole there, but make no mistake, Republicans will dig in. They will make a meal of this on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, Ellie, as you know, CNN just did this big Rudy special over the weekend. It was fascinating. Just incredible to remember how long Rudy Giuliani has been a part of our, you know, public consciousness. And now he seems to be back in focus. What's the latest? Yeah, it's yet another step in the continuing fall of Rudy Giuliani. He's now been subpoenaed by the special counsel, Jack Smith, part of the Justice Department, looking for records relating to payments that Rudy Giuliani received from Trump-affiliated political entities. This tells us that the special counsel's investigation <clears throat> is expanding, is getting into financial details. And of course, we remember that detail from the January 6th committee that Rudy Giuliani at one point requested $20,000 per day for his legal services. And so, Allison, I've decided I need to start charging a little bit more. Yeah, you really do. I don't know what you get, but you're worth so much <laughs> Not more. 20K. It ain't 20K. <laughs>